When it comes to racing circuits, they don't get much more demanding to race around than street circuits. I love to call them concrete jungles for their unforgiving, brutal nature. One slight misjudgment and your race can be over in a heartbeat. You must use every millimetre of the circuit or face putting yourself in the mid-pack of a hard-to-pass layout. For round 5 of the AOG Porsche Cup, we attacked the streets of Detroit with everything we had and pulled off pole position, being the only driver to break the sub 90 second barrier. The AOG Porsche Cup is the most competitive Porsche Cup series within the Oceanic region and after a dominant season last year, we carried the number one on our car for the seventh edition of the series. It had been an incredible run of form so far in the season, taking all four round wins so far and nine of ten race wins heading into Detroit. It hadn't always been easy for me this season, but with some incredible moments of luck and even fortune coming my way, along with the odd well-driven race, we held an unbelievable points lead at this stage of the championship, so we could afford to put it all on the line this week to try and win at one of my favourite circuits. The green flag waved in the air thanks to Barney the Flagman and we blasted it out of the starting blocks for race 1 to a nice early lead. But if there is one thing you can always bet on with a street track, it's carnage. A crash in the midfield caused a lap 1 safety car, nullifying any advantage I'd already worked up. Once the incident was cleared, we backed the field up and elected to restart quite late which caught out the driver behind and again we were off and away. With the field managing to keep themselves out of the walls and each other's way this time, we settled into our race pace of low to mid 1 minute 30s. We slowly edged out a lead to the pack behind once again who were all fighting amongst themselves. One of the drivers involved in that fight for second place was Wayne Burke, one of the quickest drivers in Australia right now, particularly in the V8 supercar. He had recently joined the Porsche Cup field and was making inroads into understanding the car and once he got into second place, it was clear that he had some excellent pace this week. But with the lead I had, there was going to be no hope of him catching safety me- car, Safety car, safety car, safety oh, car. for God's sake. The safety car would leave us with just 10 laps remaining in the first of two races, but with Wayne on my gearbox now, the race had become significantly more challenging. Again, held off restarting the race until quite late, which in hindsight wasn't the best call as Burke would see this coming and match my move. It immediately became apparent after the restart that the draft was surprisingly strong into turn 3 and Wayne was able to get some pretty big runs against me. He just wasn't quite close enough on the exit of turn 2 to properly challenge me yet into the braking zone of turn 3. He also had some excellent pace on the back half of the circuit, forcing me to go defensive into some of the larger braking zones. Sometimes he even got a little too close for comfort, but fortunately managing to hold onto the slide. Over the next few laps, his attack would continue, always looking for somewhere to pass but not quite able to do it. A great run on lap 15 out of turn 2 looked to be Wayne's best chance yet, but fortunately for me, I could just about hold him off through turn 3 and force him to back out of challenging me into turn 4. But sadly, the battle would come to a premature end with a slowdown penalty for Wayne, giving me just enough breathing room for the final 5 laps as we regularly lapped in the mid to high 1 minute 29s, even beating our own pole lap in the process. It's never comfortable running that kind of pace around a street circuit for a race distance, but thankfully we pulled it off this time around. Race win number 10 for the season was in the books. Race 2 used the finishing positions of race 1 to set the grid, so we would kick off from pole position once more, but with Wayne Burke alongside us right from the very start. We were also running in the afternoon now, so the track temp had increased significantly which meant the tyres would require some management. A clean start from the field meant we could all settle in nice and early, with myself leading from Wayne Burke and Corey Lazarus and the rest of the pack drifting back slowly. It was clear to me that Wayne just wanted to sit behind for now and let us build a buffer to Corey Lazarus in third, so I was able to get my head down and focus on hitting my marks, trying to punch in some decent laps without eating up too much of my tyres in the process. And after the opening 8 laps, I found myself in a nice rhythm controlling the pace up front, but the trouble is though, rhythms can be dangerous as you're not fully paying attention to your surroundings. 
It may have only been a small bump on the concrete, but it was enough to damage my front left quarter panel, affecting my straight line speed and making me more vulnerable to Wayne into turn three if he got a good run. The loss of pace became apparent immediately with Wayne instantly closing up on the run out of turn two and turn six. On the next lap, Wayne was closer again, this time close enough to properly attack. I hugged the inside wall down the back straight to ensure he would not get up the inside of me anytime soon, but the loss of speed in my car in a straight line was evident. He tried the crossover at turn three, but I saw it coming long in advance. The time for Wayne to sit behind and let us build a gap to third place was clearly over. The laps were ticking by slower than ever as we defended from the Synergy Sim Racing car. Wayne was constantly a presence in my mirror, but we kept hitting our marks and ensuring there was nothing he could do to pass me. We were approaching just six laps to go, so holding him off was possible, but it would still be very difficult. I kept pushing to try and get a little safety margin to him, but I eventually went a little too far in my efforts and I found the wall again. Hard. We had now severely hurt the front right quarter panel and it was clear our straight line speed would be demolished here. And on the next lap, Wayne got the run he needed out of turn two. Once again, I defended the inside of the corner to ensure myself the best possible chance of holding on, but Wayne had already committed to the outside of turn three and this time he was far up enough that I had to leave the racing room on exit. He got the better traction and nearly cleared me on the run into turn four, but we held strong with what speed was left in our car, and thankfully we did as Wayne slid the car through turn four, narrowly missing the concrete wall, but killing his exit speed in the process. We stayed side by side through the staircase section, this time me on the outside. We were still fighting door handle to door handle on a track barely fit for one car to hot lap on. Wayne was late on the brakes into turn six as it transitioned to him on the outside once more, but despite some rubbing at the mid corner, he got the drive and pulled the move off. We fought the good fight, but it wasn't to be right now. With a car with hurt straight line speed and now in turbulent air, we would have to push harder than ever to get back at Wayne and keep up our winning ways for the season. The next lap was lap 17, which for those of you wondering, 17 is actually my unlucky number. And with four laps to go, you're about to see why it's my unlucky number. Mechanical black flag, Bo Albert. Oh no! Mechanical oh, black no. flag, car one. Oh wow. So that, that second that, hit in the that's wall. That's huge. That's huge. A stupid error for myself, caught out by the dirty air and trying way too hard in a race that was arguably already over. If I had stayed in second place, I would have won the round thanks to bonus points from qualifying, but instead I threw it all away going for a race win. A mechanical black flag must be served within three laps, and with four laps to go, I was forced to serve it. Thankfully this series has one fast repair available so we weren't in the pits for too long before we came screaming back out onto the track. We rejoined in 5th place but with only a tiny margin of 4th we attacked hard immediately to make up the ground. Unbelievably, as we were on our outlap, we were greeted by Wayne Burke on the side of the road, the car stuck with a steering arm failure after brushing the wall himself. Sometimes you just gotta laugh. Smashing the race's fastest lap in the process, we kept piling on the pressure to catch what was now third place. But our mistakes in race two were too costly and we quickly ran out of laps remaining as the checkered flag flew. We would end up fourth, seven points short of winning the round. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed a mega round of racing and there is probably a life lesson to learn from too. And at the end of it, we still extended our championship lead and with just three rounds to go, we are mathematically able to lock the championship up if I score big next time out. Next up is Road America, which will be an absolute draft fest, but honestly, I can't wait for it. It should be a fantastic event and I look forward to covering the recap for you guys in a couple of weeks time.